Hello everybody, welcome. This is Jess from Forth and Birch. Today, stay tuned and I will go through the process of how I made this black flame candle tumbler with what looks, hopefully looks like to be a wax drip and label. So stay tuned and we'll talk about it. Hey everybody. This is just a little tidbit of information. I've been talking a lot lately about doing drips on tumblers such as this and something that I just wanted to to point out. I wish I had a little more uh, specific um, information for you. Ooh, I keep hitting my trigger and the glue keeps coming out. Um, I don't have the packages for either of these guns anymore so I can't tell you the actual specs but so I have this one, which was beautiful, which is why I bought it, <laughs> not for drips. And then I have this one, which is just at my local hardware store. And the difference between them, I did not realize this pretty blue one until I had bought it, that the area where the glue actually comes out, the little hole, is um, doesn't look much smaller, but it is. It's smaller than this one. Let's see if I can focus on that a little better for you. So smaller and larger, and this is going to affect your drip. Um, you could still get a drip from this smaller one. The All the tutorial videos that I've done have been used with this bigger one. I tend to like it better, but it depends on what you're doing. If you're doing a smaller project, smaller cup, whatnot, maybe this will work better for you. But I'm just going to show you a little bit of, of what the difference is. So, try not to get glue on everything. So this is the one that I typically use for drips. I have green in here right now. And of course I'm running out of glue in that one. But so, this is a drip from this one. I'm gonna grab my blue one here. Oh my goodness, I have no glue. Stand by. All right. Why would I start a tutorial with any glue in my guns? That would just make sense, right? So I'm gonna back up maybe just a tiny bit here. All right, so this is my hardware store one with a little bigger hole. Um, my stick in here still has a bit of green glue, green glittery glue. Um, and then I have just a clear one to follow it up with. So you might see both colors. But so here, So that is what my larger one does. It's already making kind of decent looking drips. All right, let's grab the smaller one here. A little harder to make drips with this one. You still can. You could still go across the top and make drips, but they're not going to be as easy to do as the larger tip. larger tip again. Much easier, I think, to do the drips. Now you do use a little bit more glue as you go along, but in the scheme of things, if it looks better in the long run than potentially getting these little spaghetti thin strands. That might be something looking into. So if you're struggling a bit with your drips, and again, I wish I could tell you the the measurement of this and really what the difference was, but it's just one thing to think about when you're either purchasing a glue gun or like I said, if you're having difficulty, it's just something to look at. So, all right, thanks.
Hey everybody, this is Jess from 4th and Birch. Please excuse my absolute awful workstation at the moment. Uh, I want to do a drip tumbler with hot glue, with a hot glue gun. I'm using mini sticks. Just uh, I'm using clear because I'm going to spray paint over this uh, at the end. However, they do make um, hot glue sticks in many, many colors that uh, you can find on Amazon, you can find on Etsy. Some of them even are like glitter. Some are even glow in the dark. So um, I'm just using just the clear cheap ones for now. Uh, the one thing that I would say for this project, it does use a decent amount of glue. Um, these are four inch sticks. And I am constantly feeding them into my glue gun. So if you could find longer ones, that actually might be worth your while. Um, because there's less uh, grabbing a new one, feeding it in. Um, I have just a pretty cheap hot glue gun, the mini one. So the diameter of this is mini. So the sticks need to say mini. It says mini here. I like to use uh, where I can change the temperature on it. This one has high and low. For this, I want the glue very liquidy because I want it to drip down my tumbler. So I want the high heat for this. I would not use the high heat for I don't know if I was just using this to adhere things to other things. Uh, tumblers can take the heat, so this is not going to get too hot for that. Um, but if I were doing something that was less able to to handle putting something super hot on it, like random craft things, I would use the low setting. But for this we're using high. I like to have my coffee cup here that I set this into, just because it's it does come with a little stand, but that is not, um, it never works. It doesn't stay up. So this works better. It's easy to throw into, and I know it's safe and not burning something, including me. I have a 20 ounce skinny and I have sanded it. And, uh, what did I sand it with? I sanded it with my, uh, 1000 grit and then I washed it with Dawn and rinsed it and let it dry. That's it. Um, I also do have a heat gun. Any sort of heat gun will work. Um, if you have a drip that is not dripping as far as you'd want to or if it's getting cool too fast and you need to throw some heat on that, um, something like this is perfect. You do have to be careful um, because this also blows air. And if I have a drip, I'm just going to use this just for sake. If I have a drip that's coming straight down, which I want it to, because that's the natural progression that a drip would look like, and I take my heat gun from the side, the drip's going to start, um, it's actually going to start doing this. And that's not what drips actually look like typically. So you have to be careful with how you apply this. Usually you want it... You want it head on and then just go down. Uh, when you use this, it will make your cup very, very hot. So be careful. And I like to do this. We're going to make something that looks like a candle. I'm going to get my glue sticks out here and just have them over here in the laying on my table. So it's easier for me to grab them versus have to futz around with that bag. Just uh, a damp little paper towel here that if I do have any that's leaking out or something, I can just throw it on there. I don't have a great place for my heat gun. It's usually where my phone goes. So, um, maybe throw it over here. All right, I'm going to try to put it next to me here and... Hopefully not melt my Cricut. Okay. 
Uh, this is a difficult place, like I said, to put my camera because I want you to see actually what I'm doing with my drips. Normally I would come at an angle from the top with my camera, but then you can't really see what I'm doing. So I'm going to see if this helps. And because of that, you get to see my layers and layers of upon dirty, uh, <laughs> dirty area. I got uh, displaced out of my craft room for the time being. So this is actually my poor kitchen table which doesn't have a whole lot of room so it's uh yeah anyway so what we're gonna do is we're going to squeeze this we don't want to touch up here at all because this is hot this is very hot and i'm going to start along the rim here and you don't want to go all the way around with the, this cools off fairly quickly if you've ever made drips with epoxy that's a little more forgiving in the sense that you can go all the way around. It does, the minute it hits this, it doesn't start cooling per se. Um, the problem with epoxy is that it doesn't harden as quickly as the glue gun. So there's pros and cons to both. This usually gives like a thicker, a really nice drip. Epoxy is tougher to get that. Um, but again, you have to work in tiny little sections with this um, because it, it does cool slash dry then um, much quicker. So. Um, my first layer is not going to be perfect. Um, you know, a candle, you light it numerous times. So the first time it kind of drips down and then the next time you light it, it drips down, but over that. So we're going to do this in several stages. So I don't need to get right up to the top right away. Um, and if I have like some kind of little boo-boo things where there's little points or things sticking out or it doesn't look perfect, I'm not going to stress about that immediately either. So... First, I'm just going to take this and make a little bit here and see what we get. So that looks like it's dripping well. But it's going to stop pretty quickly. And that's okay for that one. But I actually want these to go down pretty far. So that was one squeeze. I'm going to go right next to it, put kind of a big ball. I can even add another squeeze to that one. And to be done, I'm going to, this is usually what I do to not get those little, those little like spider web things that come off. So that's kind of still dripping. I had a better light behind me. And then now it stopped right there. So if I throw my heat gun on that, I could get maybe another little bit out of it. I want to be careful too that I don't end up tipping like this because again, you're going to get drips that go the wrong way. So let's try another one. Go across a little bit. I'm going to try to get a big thicker drip here. That looks like a good one too. Probably this isn't focusing very well. Doesn't really know what to focus on. With all my junk. I'm gonna try to clean my lens and come right back. Give me a second. All right, I did a couple things. I cleaned my lens, which didn't seem to do a whole lot. I also put my heat lamp on above me, not for the heat aspect, but just maybe a little more light. Uh, it does give it a yellowish hue though. But this is what we have so far. All right. I'm going to show you what my heat gun does with this one. So I'm going to crank up the heat, keep it on low.
And I'm kind of going down. And you can see I'm getting starting to drip again because I'm warming it back up. And I do want that one to go kind of low because right at the moment it's the same height or the same distance down as these two. So I don't want them all perfectly uh, symmetrical because that's certainly not natural looking. Now this is the part we have to be careful. It's actually even hot down here. I could not grab this and hold my thumb to it. It clears, cools quite quickly, but uh, just be very careful. All right, so you can see in my hot glue gun, I still have, I can see my stick of glue here, but I don't have any more sticking out of here. So pretty soon this is gonna get one more squeeze or two and this is all gonna get sucked into here and I'm gonna need more in here. And I don't like when that happens mid-drip uh, because when you have to take this away from your cup, uh, that's when you kind of start getting weird little, uh, weird little accidents, I guess, that don't look as natural and globby. So I'm gonna take this, put it in straight, and just be ready to push that in when, when this grabs that last one. Here's that little spider web thing I was talking about. bring it over to my paper towel it's pretty much gone but when I let go of here I don't want all these little spider web things if I can help it so this is what I have at the moment doesn't look too bad um, I'm gonna start putting some drips in between these as well but we'll get a little further around you can start seeing this is my one it's but right up next to it and this next time around it'll probably get pushed in all the way but i'm ready and again i wouldn't have to do this nearly as often if i had longer glue sticks Add more to this one. Even more. Even more. All right, do my little circle thing. Let's see how far that one goes. Still not going super far, but that's why we will put some all in the center of these. Also, you don't want them to be, I'm kind of evenly spacing them out. You don't want that. Again, that doesn't look very natural. Yeah, this is a good big one. If it starts getting too far, you can kind of blow on it a little bit just with your mouth. But again, you don't want it to go sideways, so be very careful with that. You also want to keep in mind, if you're going to put a decal or something on this, if you're going to do it on both sides, if you want both sides to kind of be the front, or if you want one side to be the front and one the back, a lot of people will put longer drips on what they're going to make the back. That one's going to be a big one, I think. No, 
one's actually kind of winning the race right now, isn't it? Thought this one was going to be bigger and it kind of blobbed up up here and it didn't go very far. Totally okay. thick if you look from the side. That one's going pretty far. I'm not getting much coming out with each squeeze. That's why I don't have a lot of pushing coming behind it. Go get that ready. Like I said, feel free to help it down. It doesn't look like it's making a trip in a southerly direction. This right here, absolutely hate. So before it gets too cool on my cup, because I don't like I don't mind so much the the spider webby things themselves but it's what they do what they leave here when they're done is like a point a little rough point and I don't like sanding it I don't like cutting it with my little Cricut knife um, I don't like doing any of that I just I don't like them around when I do my pickle tumbler as well and I make the little pickle nipples all over uh, I do a, a dollop a little dot and then I do a little spiral it's hard to see but I put it on and then I go as I'm pulling it away slowly and that it's not it's not foolproof like it doesn't always work but it's the best thing I've found so let's try another decent size one here and I'm just gonna spiral until it lets go and then I'm done then I can pull my, my gun away. And it stays hot enough that that little spiral that I just made doesn't... doesn't show. It kind of melts back into the drip. This one I went a little longer. These are all lining up right here. I take my heat gun and make that one go further down. Again, not a ton 
because once I heat it up, it's going to keep going for a little bit longer, and I don't want it all the way down to here. And I don't want it to get really flat either. I like to keep up kind of this puffiness that actually looks like candle wax. And hot. Careful. If you have little air bubbles inside the glue drips, don't worry about it. just putting my glue stick in and it didn't go in all the way so I got a little distracted and that's why nothing nothing was going very well for a moment there so I was trying to do two things at once and I didn't want to just lift this off of here all right so you can see this is starting to get a little whitish that's drying this is more clear not too dry yet these are the bubbles I was talking about there they are look at that those are okay those are on the inside they're not putting any dents in the outside drips that I have Now, the top here is not perfect. I will do a better job when I come around with my last layer. Now I'm going to start putting a few in between. I'm going to have them get just maybe a tiny bit longer and just a little bit in between these. So, when I hold it, of course, it's, uh, it focuses better. And then when I zoom out, er, frustrating. So I apologize about all of that. Okay. Here. See, I'm going to put another one right here.
and put another one here. Now I'm trying to somewhat get when I start it like up. started up in here um, when you epoxy this later I don't really want like a little hole like that um, like a little crevice because it if the epoxy doesn't settle in there then you don't have a fully sealed tumbler This one looks like it's hugging the one next to it. That is okay. This one's going to hug both of them next to it, so I want to add more so it actually goes lower than both of them. If it's not quite doing it, I'm going to add a little more for a short time. not um, adhering to the one I mean it's adhering it's just not molding as one drip it's a little drip kind of piggybacking that drip but that's okay it's kind of melding together here we'll see what it looks like when it's done but it still still has a bit of that that's okay Again, my wax does stuff like this, so. See, I left a little spider web thing here. There we go. I want this one kind of thick, because the two around it are kind of thin. I don't know that I want it to go super far down. It's looking pretty good. I got this sad little dude here. And then several that are kind of all in a row here. I think I'm going to add kind of a, a big one probably here. Now I'm kind of explaining my thought process. Oh, of course I'm running out of, need another glue stick. Ugh, sorry, I'm going to touch it back on the stand for now. I get this glue stick in here.
what we did there is I put a second one right next to this and putting the the heat gun melded them together so it's one big one which that's fine too there was this one and this one and the one that was here first were all kind of in, in line together so I went one that was longer so this one is a little longer that's good um but the putting the gun on here the heat gun actually started making these um soften and start dripping longer too so I thought well they're all going to stay the same length no matter what I do uh but what so what I was saying is I'm kind of explaining my thought process here you do not have to put a ton of thought into this you really don't it, it it's hard not to it's if anybody's ever made a quilt and it was one of those quilts where you just have to pick the next scrap, no matter what color it is, no matter what patterns on the, the material, the fabric, you just have to pick one. That's really hard for some people, um, myself included sometimes. Like, I want to pick up the next one and know that it's going to go well with the one next to it, but you don't always have that. So that's why you can't put too much thought into this. Like, that is a little nook and cranny. That's okay. Like, it looks natural. It looks okay. But you need to, excuse me, you need to make sure that your epoxy gets in there all the way when you're putting your first layer on. That's all. Just be mindful of it. I think I'm just going to do a couple small ones. That one looks good. Wanted a couple small ones. Well, that's still warm right there. Maybe I just did a super tiny one. I don't know. I just feel like it should be a long one. But... And for now, we'll do small. That's way too small. <laughs> it's not really dripping at all, is it? Well, there it goes. I'm going to leave that one alone. Because it's starting to get a little, a little drip look to it. So my one that went into two here, totally fine, but I'm going to put a small one in between here. And that one I came down kind of far, and I told it right where I wanted it, because I wanted it nice and thin. is good for the first day. I'm going to let this sit overnight. To make sure that it totally dries. It'll be much whiter when that happens. And then we will we will be back tomorrow for probably just one more one more session so I go around once like I did and then I add in a couple of these extra ones in the middle like I just did now and then I typically just do one more I try to make the top look a little better 
and uh, a little more dripping on it. Let me show you my one that's done like this. So this one looks like it's been burned numerous times. So you have your, like the first go around that I did. And then you can see this is the second one and it's much smoother on top because I focused a little more on that. So that's the plan. This looks awful right now, but trust the process. <laughs> it, it will look like a candle and not a melting zombie later, I promise. When you store this again though, make sure it's straight up, that it's not at an angle of any sort. Definitely don't store it upside down. Definitely not on a turner. You want all of these to have straight gravity that comes straight down. So, all right, see you tomorrow for our second drip. Hey, we're back. This is the next morning. And I do have just a couple of those little, little stringy spider webs. Taking a few. So what I want to do is I want to look over this and see is there anywhere that I need to fix that I need to cover with my next layer. So um, the the top that's always a given for me. I my first layer I do not do with paying any attention really to this rim. Um, again, it's a candle though, so it does not have to be perfect. This would be okay. I just like to smooth it out a little more with my next layer. But for instance, is there anything that I really have to fix? This right here, I would like to fix. Um, I came and put my, let me grab my little pointer thingy here. It's easier to see right in here. So I added this drip after the fact. So this was already here and I added this one and I tried to get it way up in there, but you can see some stainless steel kind of shining through right there. Again, it's okay if I just make sure that the epoxy gets in there all the way to make sure that this seals fully. Um, to be honest, what I'm probably going to do is just watch it to try to cover it with at least some sort of a blob or a drip. I mean, I do like this little bitty drip here, so I don't know that I want to cover it completely, but eh, you know, it, what happens happens. This one here also... I don't feel like it's as big of a deal as this one. This one's much smaller. This one I can see better, and I think the epoxy would get in there just fine without any extra bubbles or anything that would come to the surface last minute and compromise my seal of epoxy. But that's also one just to keep an eye on. I do kind of... If I had a choice, I would fix this little like circle thing right here. Um, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. So when I took my, when I put this last drip in and I took my heat gun away, it left kind of just this little circular blob, which that typically doesn't happen with wax. Usually it drips from the top down as the candle overflows. But uh, so that to me looks a little weird. Um, this, might be a tiny little hole. I can't tell if it goes all the way through to the stainless steel or not, but this whole thing I think I'm gonna uh, try to cover and make look better. Other than that, here's my little one that kind of piggybacked on itself, where I tried to make this whole drip bigger in general and it just had a little uh, mind of its own and instead of oozing together it, it made a little little piggyback one, but that's totally okay. I don't mind that at all. That's kind of about it. I mean, I do want to fill in some of these other areas, but as far as wanting to fix things, I think just kind of this area here with that first one I talked about, and then this area here. So that's really about it. That's not a whole lot. 
and if none of that gets fixed, it's actually still going to look just fine. So, all right, have my heat gun here. It's on high. I have my uh, just just moistened, just damp little paper towel here that I can kind of wipe the nose off on if I need to. I'm going to pull out my glue sticks just so I have them laying flat on my table. And I need to keep in mind that I have one in there and then I have seven left after that. So it looks like a trip to the hardware store. Uh, although I should be able to finish what I'm doing with this one in particular with what I have left. So we are basically gonna do the same concept as we did with the first layer. We're just gonna get, we're gonna start a little closer to the top and we're gonna try to make this a little more of a continuous, I don't, know, I don't wanna say continuous because I don't want you to go all the way around with it because then that will harden and it won't have any drips coming off of it. And that doesn't look very natural either. So we do have to go kind of in a progression um, like we did yesterday, but I'm not gonna talk as much through this one. Um, the concept is very similar to what I did yesterday as far as like the drip, I can help it down, I can use my heat gun. So I'm just gonna go and do this. So what, what that's gonna allow me to do is work a little faster. Um, so hopefully I can smooth this top out um, or have a smoother top to this layer so anyway we'll give that a try hopefully hopefully you can see what's going on here okay i'm gonna start actually this is an area i want to fix and then here i'm actually going to start just before here just to make sure that i really get those areas fixed Off of here, time for another stick. I don't need this to go up to the very top of the, of the rim. I do want to leave a decent area open. Not a decent area, a thin area for uh, for a good seal. So I'm gonna use my heat gun here a little bit. That one got a little gloppy. Help it down. I'm going to come down more, this one a little bit. I'm trying to fix up here. This one's going to hopefully come down a little more. All of them are still slowly moving. That one's getting kind of big, I don't know. 
I mean big is kind of like bulbous at the bottom. There we go. We'll see how that goes. Careful the cup is hot. I'm gonna see how that's covering up in the stuff. I actually covered up everything I really needed it to nicely, so we're just gonna continue on ooh, with a hot cup. see if that blends in. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, that's blending in just fine. Like, it's melting in. Kind of nice cool day today so I have the windows open so and all of my dogs are wrestling in the living room right now so I apologize for any background noise We'll see how this one goes here. It's a little slow at the moment. Hmm, that guy got down there pretty good. Um, that's not too bad, although I feel like I need maybe something in between it. I'll come back and see. I just want to make kind of one trip around. too many glops here. I don't know that that's going to be very smooth at the very end product. Right about there, so I'm going to add a little heat. Good, smoothed it out a bit. That's all I wanted. Did not mean to poke that into my cup as I'm trying to grab another stick here to feed into the end. to help this one come right down in the center if I can <clears throat> but I also made that look kind of globby on top while I did it here.
some of these have a little too much heat applied to them so they kind of turn into just this big mass of glue here so I just added another another drip down it these two are kind of turning into big globs this happens when you use your heat because um, not only does it warm up the glue but it warms up the cup and now you have a cup that's not cooling very quickly and it keeps that glue hot enough to kind of just melt together kind of melt flat versus keep its nice 3D-ness so my very last step here adding kind of this third third layer I'm gonna try not to use any heat I'm also gonna see if I don't have to have them all the same height Again, don't put too much thought into it, but also if they're starting to look really uniform, that is something that you want to address. Alright, I think that's pretty good. I think we have some 3D look to it. Our top looks better than it did yesterday. It's, it's pretty hard to get a, a really nice top, like up here. Because you know, the more you play around with it, um, it's easy to just kind of not have nice drips underneath it and it tends to kind of mess up the drips underneath it too so it's kind of the nature of the game all right well, I'm gonna let this dry for sure for today And then our next step will be spray painting. So we'll let that sit by itself and give it some time. I'll see you back when we're ready to spray paint. All right, so here we have the drips. I let them dry overnight. They're nice and white, so they're definitely dry. All right, let's spray paint. All right, I have my Krylon. Uh, this is a primer. It's an ultra flat white. Um, you can really use any spray paint you want. I usually use mattes or flats. I'm going to spray this. Get a little fuzzy thing. Okay. Uh, spray paint this. I want to get into all the little grooves, the nooks and crannies of the drips that we have done. Um, because you, you don't want any steel color showing through. See there, okay. 
Um, so I kind of came at it from the bottom. Now I'm making sure that I get the whole rim. Once you get this really bumpy area, then you can just go on and start spray painting the cup as you normally would. I'm not extremely worried about full coverage here. Um, I mean, I, we're going to make this look kind of old, vintage, dirty-ish candle. I mean, it's supposed to be a really old candle, so uh, I'm going to let a little bit of the marbling of the stainless steel come from behind. So I'm going to mostly get it white. I'm really, really trying to avoid drips, uh, paint drips, and I am not the best spray painter by any means. So, um, I, it's easy for me to get stupid little paint drips. <laughs> so, uh, do the best you can. Light coat, if you need to do a thin coat and come back later, that works too. Alright, here we are. Everybody. I am back. So now we have this spray painted. I've let it dry for a bit. Um, one thing to watch out for if you're a multi-crafter, um, you probably have glitter all over the place and this is one of those tumblers that you probably don't want glitter on. I mean you certainly could. It wouldn't look bad at all but if you didn't intend to have glitter um, maybe make sure that there's no glitter on it. <laughs> um, at least not the big chunks. We'll be adding a little bit of uh, metallic paint, uh, two different types of acrylic paint actually, um, to this guy. So let's get that in there. So I'm going to mix up some Swift Poxy. Um, I'll probably, so this is just a 20 ounce skinny, I'll probably mix up uh, 30 mils. You do want to keep the layer fairly thin because we have, you know, the decals and uh, another epoxy layer put on. However, in this area, you do want to make sure you get all the nooks and crannies and I want it to be the same color. So if I'm going to be adding my acrylic paint, I don't want to come up short and then have to mix more and, and it's swift epoxy, which it doesn't give you a ton of work time. Uh, it also cures very quickly, and, and I love that about it, but it also doesn't give you a whole lot of time to say, oops, I just half epoxied this cup, I need to mix some more and add some more on. It can cause just uh, some frustrations with that. So uh, this is it. As far as adding the paints in, I'm going to add a tiny, tiny bit of these. So this is just, it's patio paint. I usually like getting the outdoor. This isn't as big of a deal because it'll be mixed with epoxy, but uh, for a lot of my projects, if paint is ever on the the outside of a project, um, I, I like the more durable stuff. But uh, this one here is called Boardwalk, and it's kind of just a, almost like a, I don't know, antique concrete tan-ish, kind of like a grayish tan-ish. So that is what that is. And then this here is just splendid gold. So this is going to add a bit of a sparkle, not too much. I will grab here the latest one that I did with these same colors. And what it does is it gets uh, thicker. The epoxy with the paints gets thicker. And what you want is kind of this old, dingy, dirty looking candle, right? Because how old is it? Very old. I'd have to watch the movie again. I think like 300 years old? I don't know. Something. <laughs> so that's what it's going to end up looking like. But we want it to still be fairly um, transparent. We don't want it to be too opaque. And it's really hard. I don't know if you can see any of the metallic sparkle in there. It's very, it's more of a shimmer than anything. So it's very subtle, but I like just a little something that it adds. So, all right, I'm gonna pause this for a minute just to get my epoxy set up because you don't need to see me stir that for five minutes and I'll be back as soon as I'm ready with my epoxy. All right, I'm back. I have 
I changed my mind a little bit. I actually did 25 total, so 12 and a half plus 12 and a half of my equal parts A and B, and I have that here. So I'm going to set this. Can't really see it here. Well, maybe I'll put it there for now. It's not imperative that you see that per se. I'm just going to show you how much paint I'm going to put in it. I just don't want to drop paint on my tumbler. So I'm just going to take my little doodad here and I'm just going to put just a little tiny bit of paint on here. Let's see if I can do this without dropping it on my tumbler. I'm going to start off with that much. that much paint just a tiny little dollop i'm gonna put that in there and then mix up my my gold and i'm gonna do about the same, maybe a tiny bit more of the gold. So I'm going to do this just off camera a little bit so it's not over the top. So I have that much to start and I'm probably going to put just a tiny, tiny bit more in. And then we'll see what it looks like. That's my, my second dose. All right, so I'm gonna mix those in, again, off camera a little bit, just maybe a little paranoid about doing stuff right on top of my tumbler. And it's probably going to be one of the least pretty epoxies you've ever... <laughs> it looks dirty. It kind of looks like, I don't know, dirty dishwater, like some kitchen sink chowder. But uh, when you put it on, it will do a really fine job with what we're looking for. All right, I have to stir this a little better without hitting my camera either. So I'm going to bring this down a little bit. Right, that looks pretty mixed up. I want to look at it from the side of my cup also. Look at it this way and make sure that I don't have a bunch of clear epoxy on the bottom and the, the colored with acrylic on top. I want to make sure I've mixed it all the way through. So when I mix, I kind of want to pull from the bottom and, and whatnot because it can, it can get layered if you're not paying attention and, and not have as concentrated of paint in certain areas. So, all right, here we go. What I'm going to do, like I typically do to start, is just focus on my rim. I will come back to that as well, but I just like, I just like starting with that. It's one of the parts I get most nervous about as far as if something's not fully sealed. I want to make sure every layer of epoxy I put on seals this entire rim nicely. I would never want somebody to come back and say that their the integrity of the, the epoxy or the, the tumbler was compromised by getting kind of like water in it. <clears throat> Anybody can have that happen if they soak their tumbler, so very important you tell customers or anybody that you're giving these to the proper care of tumblers because most people don't know unless you tell them or unless they make them themselves. 
that is an easy enough thing to do because you know you can say hand wash only that sounds great but you also have to remind people do not soak these and there really isn't any reason that you should have to I mean first of all how dirty does it get on the outside and even if it does you can take a scrub brush to it I wouldn't scrub super hard so you don't want to um, basically kind of put little sand divots scuff up your epoxy but you could take a soft sponge like a little soft scrubby and that would be perfectly fine so now I'm going around here and I'm trying to be very conservative with my epoxy um, yet at the same time I'm trying to put decent gobs of it in these little crevices here because um, again I want this entire thing sealed we will definitely come back and put more epoxy on after we put our labels on but I really don't want any question of any area that's not sealed and full of epoxy and when you get a little more epoxy in these places that is what's giving us our dirty look So I do this first because it's much easier to do this while the epoxy is more fluid-like with the swift epoxy. Like I said, there's not a huge uh, work time on it, you know, maybe maybe 15 minutes or so. It's decent. But if you take too long at this, you definitely don't, don't want to be putting sticky gobs because that will not get into the crevices. You also want to watch those deeper crevices to make sure that there aren't any air bubbles because those could potentially harbor a pretty decent sized air bubble. So I'm kind of trying to shove almost my fingernail in these a little bit. Uh, we don't want that air bubble either staying there to see it or you don't want it coming out towards the end of the, the curing process of the epoxy and leaving a huge half air bubble for you to see. That would be difficult to sand or fix. And when I'm done doing this, I'm going to start spinning it the other way as well. Pushing epoxy up kind of under some of those, those drips at the bottom here. Alright, I'm going to spin it the other way. Got the big one there.
stomach. Let's go in the opposite direction. Or not. There we go. All right, I'm gonna pull my torch out quick before I move on, because I do have quite a few decent sized bubbles here. And now, I'm just going to move on to the rest of this, and then we'll come back up top and make sure we like what it's looking like. When I spray painted this also, I did not, how do I want to say, I did get a full coverage there are some areas that almost look a little marbled where you can see a bit of the stainless steel um, a little more so. So some areas are more white. And I, I do that purposefully. One, I don't want any of the paint to drip. So I'm a little conservative when I'm spray painting it up here, not so much, but down here I am. Uh, but also, it kind of gives again that dimension of something that's kind of old and definitely not perfect. This is getting pretty sticky pretty fast here, so I'm going to grab my torch out in a little bit again and get some of these bubbles while it's still somewhat fluid. And then this is one of those cups that you want to sit and watch spin for a while to pull out any lint, dog hair, <laughs> any of that with your tweezers. Like there's something right there, I'm not sure what it is, but let me get that here in just a minute. Grabbing my torch again. a couple areas <clears throat> excuse me that have uh, bubbles kind of in the crevices and if I add any more heat I'm actually gonna heat my epoxy too much so I'm just kind of <laughs> scooping out some of the bubbles <laughs> sometimes I'm going to put my cover over this so it does not attract every piece of 
dust lint and dog hair in my house. And then we'll be back in, I don't know, five, six hours when it's basically cured. And we'll take a look and see what it looks like. So the yellow tint is because I have my heat lamp on above this, but this is what it looks like spinning. Here we are. First layer is cured and dry, um, and I've fixed my um, my lid, or I'm sorry, my rim, so that's looking good too. All right, let's cut our label. Here's the water slides. I'm not going to go through in this video how to make them and print them and seal them and all that type of stuff. I'm even going to skim over putting them on a little bit as well. All right, so here I'm going to put the water slide on. I printed this on my own printer on white water slide paper, and then I had my Cricut cut it out. I'm not going to go through the entire process of that. It's a pretty long process as far as if, if I were doing a full tutorial on that and this video is getting long enough as it is uh, so that's kind of its own video about water slides it, uh, I don't personally have one I don't think posted there's plenty out on the, the internet that are beautiful that are perfect um, but basically I did decide I thought kind of in the beginning I was going to put a label on both sides of the tumbler and then I got to thinking that I don't know that I'm going to like how that looks so I'm just gonna put one label just on one side so I kind of picked my my favorite drips to be the the front drips and I'm going to put this on my tumbler and then you want to make sure that it's 100% dry like be fully sure that it's dry before we do the next step uh, because I do not seal this after I put it on my tumbler I just let it dry usually overnight make sure that it looks okay and then I just throw epoxy over it the next day so that is uh, what we're going to do and um, I will be back and show you what it looks like once it's dry. All right, I have finished putting the water slide on. It is still wet. I've made sure to get out all the little bubbles. I very carefully am going to just blot this with a paper towel and I am going to set this aside to let it dry. Here it is fully dry and now we're going to get ready just to throw a clear layer of epoxy over it. So I'm speeding this up. This is just a regular clear layer of epoxy over the top of it. For this one, I used the original tumbler epoxy. It takes a little longer to cure. It takes takes a decent amount longer to cure than the than the swift epoxy, but I, I don't usually put swift epoxy as a final layer. You can. Um, it, you can't do that with all fast set epoxies, but with swift epoxy, you can use it as the last layer. Uh, I just tend to use uh, their original one as my final. And again, this is a cup that you're going to want to babysit for just a little bit, watch it turn for a while, and make sure that you have as many bubbles out as you can without overheating it. But also, uh, as you see here, um, any any little specks of glitter or a piece of dust or lint or whatever because it's ultimately a solid color cup and those things show up very 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 much they will stick out like a sore thumb so here it is our candle is done I also I bought a silicone mold of a flame straw topper um, online and uh, put that on the top so that's on the straw to get it, give it uh, more of an authentic candle look. And the orange part actually has glow in the dark powder in it. So when you turn the lights off, it actually glows. So everybody, I know this got a little long, but I hope you enjoyed the video. I appreciate you so much being here with me and I hope to see you for our next one. Thank you.